Well, hello everybody and good morning. It's really nice to be able to join together on this Palm Sunday. And um, I don't know what sort of week all of you have had, but hope it's been as good as it possibly can be. Obviously, things are so much different for each of us uh, at the moment. And we're not quite sure how things are panning out, um, but I must, <laughs> must admit, um, Paul and I probably have never walked quite so much in this last week, probably than in the whole of the year, uh, which probably is just as well, given that we've also probably snacked more than we have done uh, in the last year as well. Anyway, it's good to be able to join together through this virtual church and uh, feel that we're able to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, thanks to all the different technologies. Um, so I'm just trying to think what I'm meant to be saying now. Um, for those, what I would like to say is for those who aren't able to get out or, or are finding it hard to, to keep in touch with different members of the church family or, or even friends and family, please will you um, make sure that you either email, text, phone somebody uh, amongst the church people or your own families and friends to make sure that you are able to still feel connected one with the other. It's really Im important. And you may have seen in the notices that um, there is sort of an evolving church ladies WhatsApp group. And if, you, if you're not on it yet and you would like to, then can you please contact either Amy or Laura? I'm I'm sorry, I don't quite know what the what the men are doing in that direction, whether, whether they're having their own church men WhatsApp group. I don't know whether that's yet to be developed. Anyway, it's a really good way of keeping in touch and getting to know um, what's going on and also opportunity for prayer and encouragement because it's a it's a really interesting but lovely thing that in times of difficulty and uncertainty it also gives us a time to draw closer to God and to think more about our faith and and who Jesus is to each one of us there's a verse in the Bible I can't remember offhand where it is but it says draw near to God and he will draw near to you and it's for that reason, actually, that for the prayers this morning, what I'd like to use is a psalm, a psalm that says exactly that about um, being thankful for the fact that God is with us in all things. So I'm just going to read it. And then if we can use that as our, our initial prayers this morning. OK. So it's Psalm 121, and I hope I managed to get this right. Okay, so Psalm 121 says this. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not let you stumble and fall. The one who watches over you will not sleep. Indeed, he watches over Israel, never tires and never sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not hurt you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord keeps you from all evil and preserves your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Amen. So shall we use that as we pray? That's okay. All right. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can spend this time together discovering new things about you and our need of you as we wonder and ask, how and when is this all going to end? 
thank you that there is no need for us to manage alone and that as we lift our eyes and faces to you, we are assured in your word to us that my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Thank you that in Psalm 121, it says that you watch over us all the time. You know our every need and that you watch over our lives, our comings and our goings now and forevermore. So Lord, as we walk with you, we can lean on you, Jesus, who is the way, the truth and the life. Amen. Amen. So today, um, very kindly, Pam has agreed to um, talk to us uh, about Palm Sunday and journeying and um, we'll see uh, later on exactly what she has to say and using Psalm Luke chapter 19 um, verses 21 to 41, 20, sorry 29 to 41 uh, as her passage and uh, Christina has very also very kindly uh, agreed to share something for the younger ones that also obviously we older ones can uh, join in with as well and uh, gain some insights from and also a bit later after um, Pam's talk Christine is going to be saying a monologue which hopefully will give just a little bit of insight and an encouragement to each of us to continue taking steps with God, uh, with the one who said that he is the way, the truth and the life. Um, I have come that you might have life and life in all its fullness. And the importance of taking that on board um, is probably uh, easy for all to see uh, of us uh, now uh, in these difficult times. And then Andrea uh, Smith is going to lead us in some prayers and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to remember uh, at the end of this service, this little virtual service, how good it is to be in the house of the Lord together, uh, even if it is in uh, a virtual house of the Lord. And we praise the Lord that uh, uh, and thank God for Ross and everybody who's been able to make this possible. And uh, so let's continue with the service. If I can stop and then let other people get on with it. OK. Good morning and welcome to Palm Sunday Sunday School. So today with my happy helpers, we are going to be yeah, making mommy. some crafts. We're going to be making yeah, these beautiful palm branches and we're going to need them for the story a with straws. We're going to need them a little bit later on. We'll show you how to do that. <laughs> because it is Palm Sunday, I thought we could make some palm branches to to, to wave. Mommy. So we can do this quite easily at home. What we need to do, Nikki, if you want to pay attention, is we're going to draw around our hands, then we're going to cut out the picture of our hands, and we're going to stick it to our green, to our straws. Okay, okay so. join in. For it you're going to need your palm branches that we made a little bit earlier on. 
I'll tell you when you need to use them. You need to use them when my mum says, Hosanna. Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples, do you want to be a disciple as well? To go to the, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them. Can I need to go walk? Mummy, mummy, do I need, mummy, do I need to take a long walk, like round do? Yeah, you can take a long walk. Oh, brilliant. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. See, your king will come riding on a donkey. So the disciples went and they did as Jesus instructed them. Oh, Here are your donkeys. Oh. And they put their coats on top of the donkeys so that Jesus could sit on them. Jesus! Can we have the donkeys, please? Okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Okay, let's put the coat on. Put a coat on the donkey. Whose coat should we put on? That, that's fine. Yeah? No. What, what coat do you want? Okay, excellent. It's fluffy. it's fluffy. Right, so you can sit on that. And a very large crowd spread their coats on the road and cut branches from the trees and spread them all across the road. So let's do that. Let's put the coats on the road, everybody. You can get some of your coats from home and spread them out in your living room. All in your dining room, whichever room you prefer. Or the kitchen. Oh, oh, okay, so this is the bit where you're going to need your palm branches. Palm branches. Do you want your palm branch, Georgina? I've got mine. Okay, I've got Nicholas's. And the last one. And the crowds ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna! That's the wrong way. Oh, that way. Yeah. And those who went ahead of him shouted, Hosanna in the highest! Hosanna in the highest! Blessed is he! Hosanna in the highest! Hosanna in the highest! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And that is how Jesus entered into Jerusalem. In our Bible story today, we are remembering a very special event in Jesus' life. Palm Sunday is the day when Jesus rode into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. The people were so excited that they cut down palm branches and waved them in the air. They shouted Hosanna in the highest and they were just so happy that their king had arrived. Let's pray. Dear God, as we celebrate on this Palm Sunday, help us to remember that day when all the adults and children waved palm branches and cheered as Jesus entered Jerusalem as King. Help us to remember that he is our wonderful King and that we can praise him every day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hello again! Hello again! There's some drawings and pictures and word searches that you can print off on a folder that hopefully will have been shared with the email. Today's Bible reading is from Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 41. After Jesus said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever rid ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Tell him, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. 
When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. Amen. No one takes kindly to an incoherent woman in her pyjamas storming into the governor's office, even if I am his wife. I might be overwrought, but I am not going to make him look foolish. So instead, I wrote him an urgent note. Have nothing to do with that innocent man. I have suffered a great deal because of a dream that I had about him. I had hoped this would help him to take me seriously. You know, without being overdramatic. Because it was the truth. I knew he was innocent. I'd had this dream, a dream about a man, a simple sort of man, but he was somehow perfect. I mean, he was complete. He did what he said, and he was what he said, and what he was saying was, I am the truth, the way, and the life. And I knew he was the truth. But I couldn't quite see how he was the life because of all the blood. It was just pouring out of him. From his head, his back, his hands, his feet and his side. It was just pouring out of him. How can all that blood be life? And it it just continued to pour and it covered everything and it covered me and it was so overwhelming that I just, I woke up, I made myself wake up and come round and I tried to think straight about everything that had happened. And then I realised that this was actually happening. That man was Jesus of Nazareth and he was with Pilate right now and I had, so had to do something to stop it. Because all that blood, the thought of it, staining Pilate, was quite frankly too much to bear. But the trouble is, there is so much religious politics going around round here. You know, there's Herod, there's the high priest, the Sanhedrin, and even the elders are whipping up the crowds. And there's Pilate in the middle of it. This is exactly what he does. He has to figure out who to listen to and how to keep the peace and how to uphold the empire. And he said that the evidence wasn't even paper thin. It was non-existent. But the defendant was doing absolutely nothing to help himself. He was speaking in riddles. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. I could just imagine Pilate's eyes at the word truth. It's so important to him. What is the truth? He asked, well, not knowing that he was looking at it. But then, of course, he didn't want a riot. A riot in Jerusalem does not look good on the CV. So he washed his hands of it. He told them that he couldn't find a case, but played the people pleaser. And he's allowed the execution. Is that something you can really wash your hands off? I mean, honestly. The one time I tell him what I think about anything important and he just washes his hands of it. God have mercy on him. Oh, why does it matter? What do I care? How can the truth be there and you can see it and you can just wash your hands of it? The one who has spoken nothing but truth is soon going to be in a grave. And what can truth do from a tomb?
Good morning everybody. Um, um, I've been asked to lead the prayer this morning and I've been really struck over the last couple of weeks how blessed we are as a fellowship to be part of a, a great family of God and um, just pray that all the people listening out there who belong to Berniston Methodist will feel very much part of um, this time now and um, will know that they're looked after by the people within Berniston Fellowship and if, you, if there are any particular needs please let us know because we want to help you as much as possible. So another thing I've been struck by for myself is how much I'm having to learn to trust in this wonderful God that we serve and finding out for, for myself that his promises are true and real and that I can call on him and he does help and he does answer my prayers. And he can do for you too. So let's join together in um, the prayers this morning. And I'm going to be using the prayers that um, are set prayers from the um, Methodist Church for this morning. So um, let's just start together with a couple of verses which stress some promises of God. It says, Don't be afraid. For I am with you in Isaiah 41. In Psalm 145, it says, The Lord is close to all who call on him. He hears their cries for help and rescues them. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. That's Isaiah 26. So, let's pray together. God, as we enter Holy Week, we thank you for the freedom we have to worship, the safety and the protection that we are granted through the laws of our country to learn about and proclaim your name freely. May we never take for granted the opportunity we have to openly declare the good news in the places you have called us to be. We pray for those without that opportunity, for those in the world who are meeting in secret, who risk their lives simply by worshipping you. Sustain and protect those who worship you today in places of threat and danger. May they know that they are in the prayers of your people. Lord, as we enter Holy Week, we pray for our leaders, for those called to shepherd your flock. May they know you ever more deeply. Grant them wisdom and discernment as they strive to lead us into being the church you have called us to be. As they give out day by day, week by week, we pray that they would be filled to overflowing by your spirit. We pray also for the leaders of our country May your voice be heard in their discussions. May your heart be witnessed in their actions and may your will be done through them. Strengthen those in government who do know you. Give them courage to speak up and step out. We pray that through their witness, others will come to know you. God, as we enter Holy Week, we pray for those we know who are suffering. We pray that to those living in darkness, you would provide light. To the hurting, you would provide healing. And to the mourning, that you would provide comfort. Thank you that in your very nature, you care about us and understand our pain, our worries and our fears. 
and this week we pray that you would open our hearts to encountering you more closely than we ever have before. As we journey through this week and encounter the confusion of Thursday, the darkness of Friday and the hopelessness of Saturday, may we hold firmly to the joy, the hope and certainty of Resurrection Sunday. Amen. God bless you. God of love, in these strange stay-at-home days, we rejoice in your eternal promise that you will bring us home to a place that's safe and free from fear. But we know that in these days too many homes will not feel safe and will be bearing all too much fear. So, gracious God, we pray for our homes and for homes everywhere. Bring calmness to anxious hearts, peacefulness to angry minds, kindness within strained relationships, forgiveness for yesterday's mistakes, patience for today's shortcomings, hopefulness for tomorrow's yet to be, and space enough within our walls to flourish and to grow in unanticipated ways. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, who blessed us by making his home amongst us full of grace and truth. Amen.